very very quick PowerPoint now it should have uh, tacked it onto the end of the last PowerPoint but um, it won't take very long it's just on the periodic table um, now you need to know your way around the periodic table it's not just this random assortment of, uh, of hieroglyphics there is some order to it now the first thing is that you have your your vertical groups now those are the columns so uh, column one uh, hydrogen lithium sodium potassium rubidium cesium and francium and then you've got column two beryllium magnesium calcium strontium barium and radium so your your vertical groups your vertical columns are called groups okay so i'll talk about group one group two and so on and so forth um, now your your horizontal rows are called periods so period one has just got hydrogen helium in it group uh, uh, period two has got lithium beryllium boron carbon nitrogen oxygen fluorine and neon in it and so on and so forth group three four uh, uh, period three four five six going downwards <clears throat> so i could find any element on the periodic table by saying uh what is in um group two uh period two and that would be beryllium if i said what's in uh what's in group one period three that would be sodium so that's groups and periods it's basically columns and rows or verticals and and horizontals uh, the next thing you need to know is if you look over to the right hand side where you see b and si and as and te and at there's like like a, a, a bold line where there's kind of a staircase going down now everything on the left of that staircase is a metal so um Aluminium is a metal, and then if you go above the staircase, boron, that is not. Carbon is not, nitrogen is not. So everything on the left of that little staircase there is a metal. So most of the periodic table is constructed of metals. Next thing, uh, the ones in red, as it says on here, are gases. The ones in blue are liquids, and the ones in uh, black are solids. So there aren't many uh, liquids. Now this is at room temperature. If you change the temperature, if you got up to 500 degrees C, this would look very different. But at room temperature, there's only two. There's Hg, which is mercury, and there's Br, which is bromine. Those are the only two liquids at room temperature. Let's have a look at this more colourful version. Um, now, the groups. Look at group one. Hydrogen, lithium, sodium, H, L, I, N, A, K, R, B, so on and so forth. That's group one. Then we have group two. Now ignore the next bit, ignore the transition metals, the sort of light grey colour ones in the middle. Skip all the way along to that pink one, the B in group three A. That we we call group three. Okay, so group one, group two, skip that little box, and then group three, uh, C carbon is in group four, N nitrogen is in group five, oxygen is in group six, fluorine is in group seven, and helium is in group eight. Okay, so we've got eight groups, and just don't count that that central part. Okay, um, if you go on to do A level chemistry, that will become clear why that's there. But for the moment, we just don't need to think about it. It will confuse things if we did. So if I said, "What's the first one in group two?" You'd say beryllium. If I said, "What's the first one in group four?" You'd say carbon. Okay. Um, now there's there's a you don't need to know many of these these elements you don't need to know what they are what they do or how they are but there's a few groups that you do and the first one is group one group one and don't worry it says one a just we, we don't we're not going to use a and b and all this it's just group one lithium sodium potassium all those um this these are what's called the alkali metals and they're all they're all similar they're all very soft you could cut them with a knife they're all very reactive if you if you throw them in water they they explode or, or they give off uh, um, a flame or hydrogen gas or something like that. They're called the alkali metals. When you put them in water, they they produce a hydroxide which turns the water alkali. That's why they're called the alkali metals. So that group all have something in common. Um, if you shoot all the way across to the green section in group seven, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine, astatine, and I don't know what UUS is, but it's in group seven. Um, those are your um, those are your halogens. And they have certain sort of properties in common as well. Uh, the last group that you have to know about is the group eight. Now those are your noble gases. Now those guys have eight electrons in their outer shell. That means, and if you remember from the last video, they are they have a full outer shell. They're happy. Helium's got two in its first shell, so it's got a full shell, so it's happy. It doesn't want to react with anything. 
Helium does not want to get rid of any electrons or gain any, and because of that, it's unreactive. Neon. Neon's got 8 in its outer shell. If you can see the little number there, it's 10. So if you remember back, that means 2 in the first shell, 8 in the second. That's 10 electrons. So neon has a full outer shell. It's happy. It doesn't want to lose any electrons. It doesn't want to gain any electrons. This makes it very unreactive and stable. And the rest, argon, krypton, uh, xenon, and so on, they are all, all the group 8s are stable. They don't react with anything. So the, the columns, the groups, all share. They're like a family. They all have something in common with each other. So the periodic table isn't just this assortment of, of, of uh, hieroglyphics, of letters and numbers. It actually makes sense. The more you come to study it, the more you realize that each bit makes sense. Um, so those are the three that you have to know. You have to know about group one, group seven, and group eight. And in future PowerPoints, we're going to go into those three groups in a bit more detail. Last thing, last thing I have to say is um, the group is the number of electrons in the outer shell. So if I said lithium to you, look way over to the left, on the far left hand side, just underneath hydrogen, lithium. Lithium is in group one. What that means is it has one electron in its outer shell. Okay, so it's got two in the first and one in the second. Sodium's the same, Na, just underneath it. It's got 11. What does that mean? It means two in the first, eight in the second, that makes 10, and one in the third. And potassium's the same and rubidium's the same. They get bigger and bigger as you go down, but they only have one electron in their outer shell. Now that means they're very reactive. It means that all they need to do is get rid of one single electron and they'll be happy. So the group ones are desperate to get rid of one electron and then they'll be happy. So they're quite reactive. Go across to the group sevens. It's in group seven, so they have seven electrons in their outer shell. If you don't believe me, fluorine's got a nine, so that means two in the first, um, and seven in the second. That makes nine. So fluorine and chlorine, bromine, iodine, and all these, they have seven in their outer shell. Now, if they've got seven in their outer shell, how many more do they want to be happy? Well, they want eight, don't they? So they only want one more. So hang on a minute. Group ones want to get rid of one, and group sevens desperately want one. So they're perfect for each other and this is why you see salts like sodium chloride and lithium chloride and uh, uh, potassium fluoride and things like that the group ones and the sevens go together very very well so in boron there's three electrons in the outer shell in nitrogen there's five in the outer shell in helium there's eight in the outer shell whatever group it's in that is the number of electrons there are in the outer shell you don't even need to look at the numbers okay so that's it. That's the periodic table. A quick, very quick look around the periodic table. You, you know now what, which ones are metals, which ones aren't. You know what group 1, 7 and 8 are. You know about some of their properties. And you know that the, the group they're in is the number of electrons in the outer last shell. Good. OK, so once again, I've got a, six questions for you to do. Pause the video um, and have a go and check your answers. Thanks for watching.